From the Kelvin Grove Newsroom, this is QUT News. Eastern Australia swelters in extreme spring temperatures. And the latest from the grand final team camps. Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. Queensland's record-breaking heatwave has hit the southeast. As Brisbane's residents sweltered, the Cancer Council warns there isn't enough shade in the city. Unseasonably hot weather has scorched Brisbane as temperatures rise well into the 30s. As many search for shelter, there are growing concerns that Brisbane's most popular areas lack proper shading. They should be looking into areas where the public are out and about, such as King George Square here in Brisbane, um, very big area that people congregate in through their lunchtime, and it's largely leaving people exposed to the sun in that huge area. Amidst one of the hottest Septembers on record, health services are warning people to take proper precautions. If you have to be out in the hottest part of the day, make sure you, you're aware that if you start feeling tired, headachey, dry, you need to get out of the heat and start cooling yourself down and improve your hydration with lots and lots of water. And it's not just about us. Pet owners have been reminded to look after their furry friends with ample water and shade. Hot weather's on the way, we all know that, so please look after your pet. Every year we get animals that die of heat stress. Let's try and make this year the year that it doesn't happen. Here in Springfield, temperatures have soared to the high 30s, with hundreds flocking to the pool to try and escape the heat. The hot weather will continue into the weekend, with a cool change expected Sunday. Ethan Gould, QT News. Our weather reporter Noor Galani joins us now. Noor, it certainly was hot today and windy along the coast. It sure was, Joe. Northwesterly winds gusted up to 35 knots, and there were strong wind warnings for waters from the sunny coast down to the border. So what's causing these conditions? This unseasonably hot air mass continues to sweep through Queensland and New South Wales. Both states today recorded their highest September temperatures on record. With the heat comes fire dangers, and there are severe warnings current in both Queensland and New South Wales. So how long will the heat last? I'll have more on that later in the bulletin. Redevelopment of Brisbane's historic Howard Smith Wharves is finally taking shape. The Lord Mayor was on hand to inspect the progress as the heritage restoration work began. For years a piece of Queensland history in limbo. Now work on Brisbane's Howard Smith Wharves is in full swing. The Lord Mayor was on site for a progress report on the $110 million redevelopment. This is where we will mix the history of Brisbane together with the contemporary new look, the way forward, the opportunity to build a new world city and uh, that's what this is about. Excavation work has now begun with up to 50,000 tonnes of rubble to be removed from the site by the end of the year. It will also have cafes, restaurants, all sorts of opportunities for people to come down here and really celebrate what it is to live in our beautiful river city. Work on revitalising the heritage listed parts of the project is also well underway, with the first shed to be raised before new flooring is laid and original elements restored to their former glory. With an estimated completion date of late 2018, the Howard Smith Wharf will be a world-class entertainment hub with bars, restaurants, a convention centre and even a luxury hotel. A far cry from the original 1930s Riverside Warehouse. Jessica Riga, QUT News. Attorney General George Brandis says Tony Abbott's being hypocritical in calling for a ban on Macklemore from performing his chart-topping single at the NRL Grand Final. Mr Abbott said the song, Same Love, is akin to an advertisement for same-sex marriage and footy fans deserve a Grand Final free of politics. For uh, Mr Abbott or anyone else to say that it should be banned I think it was a bizarre thing to say. I thought Mr Abbott believed in freedom of speech. But Macklemore plans to perform the song anyway, saying he will ignore criticism from angry old white dudes. Anti-terror bollards will be installed along the AFL Grand Final Parade route in Melbourne. It's just one measure police are taking to stop vehicle attacks. It's one of the biggest days in the sporting calendar and Victoria Police aren't taking any chances. They'll be out in force to protect footy fans at tomorrow's grand final parade. 1,000 officers will be deployed, while temporary bollards will be installed along the route's perimeter to protect more than 100,000 fans from potential road car attacks. But speculation of a possible terror threat hasn't dampened the mood for Crows and Tigers fans, or other creatures for that matter. Penguins from the Melbourne Aquarium gave their grand final predictions, 
with fish cakes decorated in teen colours. The crows took the cake. Elizabeth Peel, QUT News. He's a little boy with a big heart. The nine-year-old has travelled around Australia raising funds for kids with cancer and lighting up their lives. Bryce Uren has been giving young cancer patients at Brisbane's Lady Salento Hospital a reason to smile. Make up the thing you did. After visiting eight children's hospitals in Australia, schoolboy Bryce knows all about cancer. I wanted to help kids with cancer and I'd seen my mum go through cancer and I thought about how scary it would be to be a child with cancer. His mum was diagnosed with a rare form of the disease six years ago. The same month, four-year-old family friend Max found out he had brain cancer. After returning home from hospital, Max was afraid of the dark. A nightlight solved the problem, and so began the Max Love Project. Whenever Bryce talks about this, and whenever Bryce smiles about it, and um, spreads the love, hope, happiness, and joy that he's created with this, it melts my heart. Max's parents collaborated with Cloud B to create Super Max the Turtle, a specialised nightlight for children with cancer. Nine-year-old Bryce joined the cause, setting a goal to raise enough money to buy more than 800 of them for young cancer patients. Today marks the last day of Bryce's journey here at the Lady Salento Children's Hospital, where he's brightening up the hallways with more than just a nightlight. Bryce now has his sights set on taking the turtles to New Zealand. Emma Crichton, QUT News. The 2018 Commonwealth Games will bring athletes from more than 70 countries to the Gold Coast, as well as tens of thousands of visitors. While the government is confident in providing enough room for visitors, their numbers may not stack up. Gold Coast's largest sporting spectacular is expected to attract more than 100,000 people from around the nation and overseas. With so many needing a place to stay, the Commonwealth Games will likely be a boon for accommodation businesses. But the city's capacity of about 30,000 beds means many will struggle to find a place. With one and a half million people expected to attend events during the Games, the question looms, will the Gold Coast be able to bear the brunt? The state government is confident it will. One of the great things about the Gold Coast is there is a real mix of accommodation offering. We're also partnering with Ninja um, Camping, which will provide new camping opportunities and a number of public spaces um, on the Gold Coast, including, for example, school ovals. All operators are making as many beds and rooms available as possible at a fair and reasonable price. Despite the government's assurances, some providers will be taking advantage of the high demand. One Airbnb host revealed that a number of her properties have booked out for next year, at three times the normal rate. For Airbnb properties, well, they will have people who wouldn't normally have put their place on Airbnb are listing for the games, and so after the games, a lot of them will just drop off, I imagine. The online accommodation provider reportedly helped 66,000 people find rooms for the 2016 Rio Olympics. There will be plenty of space for people to, uh, to accommodate people. The question will be, can you attract people to your place? With the finish line in sight, preparations are full speed ahead at the luxury Royal Pines Resort. It's absolutely going to go crazy. So for us, just today, I got an inquiry um, for 500 rooms um, over the Com Games two-week period. So I think as we get closer and closer, there'll be absolutely more rooms and more demand. While the games are great for business, price hikes could be a major affordability problem for those needing accommodation. Visitors with limited budgets may have to pitch tent further away from the Gold Coast and use public transport. But with services like the city's G-Link also expected to come under pressure, it's unclear how well the Commonwealth Games fans will be catered for. Noor Gilani, QUT News. Storm captain Cameron Smith cemented his place as a rugby league legend. Overnight, he won his second Dally M medal. It was a big night for the Melbourne club. They took home six awards, including Smith's two other gongs for best captain and best hooker. Billy Slater won for best fullback, Craig Bellamy for best coach, and Suliasi Vunavalu as top try scorer. Smith now has a chance to win an Origin Series, a Dally M, Premiership, and World Cup glory, a feat never achieved in the game. But in his typical humble fashion, he's not letting it get to his head. Everyone knows it's a, it's a team sport, not an individual sport. And I need to thank all of my teammates and obviously you know, my coaches for the help that they've given me this year to, to allow me to do what I've done on the footy field. 
It's been 11 years since Smith was named the game's best for the first time. Storm's opponents in Sunday's grand final, the North Queensland Cowboys, had a good showing of their own. Winger Kyle Felt won the award for best try, and Dally M runner-up Michael Morgan won the award for best halfback. Smith beat the 25-year-old Morgan by a large margin of eight votes. Not bad for a 34-year-old. Ben Downey, QUT News. And we'll have more on both NRL and AFL grand final teams later in sport. America's original Playboy, Hugh Hefner, has died, aged 91. Playboy confirmed the news in a tweet describing Hefner as an American legend. Famous for his lavish lifestyle, Hefner often appeared in silk pyjamas surrounded by Playboy bunnies. He passed away from natural causes at the Playboy Mansion. His longtime home became one of the most well-known residences in the world, synonymous with Party Central. Students in Barcelona have gone on strike after the arrest of several Catalan government officials and the confiscation of millions of ballot papers. It comes ahead of this weekend's vote for independence from Spain. Students at the University of Barcelona are in lockdown, cancelling classes, organising a strike, setting up information booths and plastering the campus with banners, advocating for their right to choose. This student says they've gathered to vindicate the vote, to support democracy. While this student says his generation is staking its hopes in the establishment of a Catalan Republic as they've grown up being overlooked by the Spanish government. But the government says the vote is unconstitutional. The protests have been largely peaceful so far but some tourists in the area are wary of unrest after the vote, scheduled to be held on Sunday. Coming here for my first day of holiday, it's quite overwhelming. It's we were concerned that it may be more aggressive, but they seem pretty peaceful. The intensity of the demonstrations has waned in the past few days, but many fear it is the calm before the storm. Tiffany Turnbull, QUT News. Around 3 million people in northern Iraq have voted overwhelmingly in support of creating an independent Kurdish state. Almost 93% of voters ticked yes, but the non-binding referendum has angered governments in Baghdad, Turkey and Iran, who refuse to recognise its legitimacy. Baghdad is now threatening military action and a blockade against the Kurds. Thousands of South Africans have marched in nationwide protests calling for the resignation of President Jacob Zuma. The protests are in response to corruption allegations. Zuma must go! Zuma must go! Thousands of workers gathered in anti-corruption protests to call for President Zuma, who's been in power since 2009, to step down. The Congress of South African Trade Unions called on its more than one million members to strike and join marches in major cities across the country. The strikes follow numerous allegations that Zuma's association with the Gupta family has influenced the award of state contracts worth millions of dollars. We are sick and tired of corruption that is taking place in our government. The protests come three months before the African National Congress will choose its next leader with many supporters backing Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa in light of corruption allegations by the Zuma party. Elizabeth Peel, QT News. Residents of Dominica are now being evacuated from the island following Hurricane Maria's destructive path across the Caribbean. U.S. sailors transported them to nearby Martinique and Guadalupe Islands. The Category 5 storm struck on September 18, affecting most of the 73,000 residents living there. Hurricane Maria is the first recorded Category 5 storm in Dominica and claimed the lives of 15 people. More than 200 migrants have been rescued off the coast of Libya after their boats were left stranded by bad weather. The migrants were from several African countries and Syria. Battered and bruised but alive, these migrants set out in the hope of finding a better life in Europe, but their dreams were cut short. The Mediterranean Sea proving too difficult to tame. <laughs> This Libyan Coast Guard colonel received a distress call from the floundering migrants. He says 
With the coordination of Italian authorities, he managed to rescue them. The Italian government is relying on the Libyan Coast Guard to put a halt to migrant arrivals. Libya is a jumping off point for many people trying to reach Europe by sea. The migrant crisis has been a significant issue in European politics. More than 350,000 people made the perilous journey across the Mediterranean last year, with more than 5,000 losing their lives. Joanna Little, QUT News. British budget airline EasyJet is aiming to have a commercial-sized electric plane in the sky within the next 10 years. If successful, it could revolutionise short-haul flights across Europe. They're not the Wright brothers, but a partnership between Wright Electric and EasyJet is looking to cut plane pollution. We have a small electric plane flying. Our goal is our first commercial plane in 10 years. The proposed electric plane would carry 180 passengers up to 550 kilometres. So this range would cover many of Europe's most popular routes. In fact, around 20% of short-haul flights across the continent. So we think there'd be a real appetite. We certainly would love to fly an electric plane. We think our passengers who are increasingly telling us they want their carbon footprint, their environmental impact to be reduced, would fly an electric plane. The design contains battery packs in the body of the plane and energy efficient wings and would be a similar size to the Airbus A320neo. This business duo believe they've got the jump on major manufacturers like Airbus and Boeing. It's competition, so there's a race now to get the first all-electric commercial, all commercial plane in the sky. EasyJet aims to cut emissions by 10% per passenger by 2022. Josh Martin, QUT News. It was a gold medal performance in itself, as Prince Harry fell victim to a heist carried right out under his nose at the Invictus Games in Toronto. Meghan Markle may have stolen his heart, but this cheeky little girl well and truly stole Harry's popcorn. He was oblivious as the repeat offender returned for handful after handful. The prince not only pardoned the mischievous toddler for her crime, but posed for a photo with her. The Cowboys and Storm are making final preparations before Sunday's NRL Grand Final, naming unchanged sides from last week's preliminary finals. As we heard earlier, both teams were rewarded at last night's Dally M's, but that's not always a good thing. Despite Melbourne's success last night, Cameron Smith's Dally M medal win may be a bad omen for the Storm. Six have lost the big game, including Smith, in 2006. And Cowboys forward Jason Taumalolo lost his place in the NRL Team of the Year because of a points deduction due to suspension. In other news, the Bulldogs are set to announce former Test and Origin forward Dean Pay as their new coach for 2018. Pay's built a reputation for his work with the Canberra Raiders, as well as coaching the New South Wales under 20 side. He's replacing embattled former coach Des Hasler, who was sacked due to Canterbury's lacklustre performance this year. Pay met with the board on Tuesday and was told he had the job this morning. Joanna Little, QUT News. It's smooth sailing for the AFL Grand Final teams, with both expected to be full strength in Saturday's big game, while the Lions are on the verge of landing an unexpected signing. Richmond and Adelaide head into Saturday's AFL Grand Final with unchanged team lineups. The Tigers players completed this morning's main training session unscathed. After the way our teams performed the last couple of weeks unchanged, um, you know, it'd have to be hard to make a change, I would have thought. Crows forward Mitch McGovern will not return from injury after failing a fitness test on his hamstring. And locally, the Brisbane Lions are on the verge of a player recruitment coup. Four-time Hawthorne Premiership player Luke Hodge is tipped to sign a two-year deal with the Lions. I think the reason why I'm probably contemplating this is the joy I had last year playing with the younger guys and, and helping develop them. It's a shock move after Hodge retired in round 23. Lions head coach Chris Fagan, a former Hawthorne assistant, is believed to have enticed Hodge to the club. The deal could also include a post-career coaching role. Josh Martin, QT News. England cricket has been rocked by Vice-Captain Ben Stokes' arrest in the lead-up to the Ashes. 
Shocking footage reveals Stokes fighting in the streets of Bristol. His arrest drew comparisons to Aussie Vice Captain David Warner's scuffle with England's Joe Root on the 2013 Ashes Tour. But Warner's turned it around. To be established at the moment from where I came, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, I've got a great bunch of teammates around me. Warner will play his 100th One Day International in Bangalore against India tonight. Australia is behind 3-0 in the five-game series. Hello, time to take a look at the weather. Today was the worst of the week's hot temperatures, and while it might have been bad, spare a thought for Birdsville, who suffered under 43 degrees. A look at today's scorching temperatures for the southeast. Around the southeast today, Brisbane reached 35 degrees, a very pleasant 29, the top on the Gold Coast, but look at the Sunshine Coast, feeling the heat at 36, the worst, Ipswich. They sizzled on 39 degrees around the nation tomorrow, and that miserable weather is starting to clear up. Sydney will be a sunny 26, Canberra fine too, a top of 19, but multiple showers are predicted for Melbourne, Hobart and Adelaide. Back to Queensland now, and tomorrow, Cairns and Townsville will reach 30. Rockhampton sweltering at 37 degrees, and hot day inland, Mount Isa and Longreach both 40 degrees. On Morton Bay, not a good day for boaties. Expect 25 knot northwesterlies and seas rising up to 2.5 meters. The outlook for the Gold Coast tomorrow is sunny with a top of 29. The Sunshine Coast a touch warmer, a top of 34. Finally, Brisbane is looking better over the next three days. Tomorrow will still be a hot one at 34, but clouds are moving in for the weekend, 32 on Saturday. And some merciful Sunday rain will keep the mercury at a bearable 25. That's all the weather news for now. Finally, the Museum of Modern Art in New York has unveiled a new fashion exhibition. It highlights the designs that have changed the world. The exhibit explores everything from famous dresses to Converse sneakers. It features more than 100 iconic pieces of clothing and accessories. What was important for us was to have an exhibition that talked about design as aesthetics and uh, fashionist politics that talked about the ethical implications. Politically charged pieces include items such as the balaclava or religious garments such as the hijab. The infamous Kaepernick NFL jersey is in the mix as the first player to kneel in protest during the US anthem. Other famous items include Saint Laurent suits and Coco Chanel's little black dress. The little black dress goes from the 1920s all the way to today. And it starts, of course, with Coco Chanel's little black dress, which is considered, even though it was not the first time there was a little black dress in history, it was the first time the little black dress was a thing and was called that way. It's the first time in 73 years that MoMA has an exhibit focusing on fashion and design. It opens to the public this Sunday. Emily Kuna, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.